Hello and welcome to another video. Today what I want to do with you is go over the mono processing in Cyril and Photoshop. I've done this video in the past but I've got a lot of responses from you all that it was way too fast and I wasn't explaining what I'm doing. So today I want to improve this and um, so it's a little bit more clear for you all. Um, I also made a few changes to my workflow. Um, I've improved it. Uh, I think uh, so if you, you understood the previous video, it might still be worthwhile watching this one. Uh, like I said, I'll be using Cyril and Photoshop. Um, but if you don't have Photoshop, because it's quite expensive, um, you can use GIMP, which should work fine as well. It's very similar in uh, the way it works. Or you can just process it completely in Cyril and be done with it. Um, but I think it's definitely worth taking it to GIMP or Photoshop uh, to make a few uh, final adjustments. Um, now let's discuss the data for this video. I shot uh, luminance RGB, uh, luminance 24 times 600 seconds and for the RGB I did uh, 12 times 600 seconds per channel. Um, I also shot calibration frames, flats, bias, darks I would always suggest shooting all of the, all three calibration frames um, as it will definitely improve your image a lot. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to processing. We're going to go into the top left here to create a working directory. This is what will tell Cyril where it should store its files. So we're going to click it on the house here and then this window will pop up. You can now go to any folder on your desktop um, you can even, or on your, your computer. Um, you can even create new folders uh, on the top right here. Um, I'm already in my temporary serial folder where I, s where I process basically. I'm going to create a new folder and call it mono processing. So, uh, you can call this whatever you want, um, but I would suggest doing s naming it something that makes sense. So you can go back later and think like, hey, I processed this target here. Um, and maybe you want to go back to it or something. It's quite handy to call it something that makes sense. So I'm going to create it. And now what we're going to do is create another folder. Um, and we're going to start with our calibration frames. So I'm going to start with the darks. So I'm going to click create here. Um, I, I, by the way, I used enter before because it's easier. It's on the keyboard. But you can hit create uh, on the blue button as well. So create. And I click open to confirm. Then we need to convert the files into a sequence. So Cyril knows these images are supposed to be together and I'm going to process all of these images basically. So I'm going to click the plus here. And then I'm going to go to the Im where I have saved my images. For me it's right here. Um, and then there's the darks and this is all of them. To select your files there's two options. You can drag with your mouse. You can click one of the images, the top of the, or the bottom. Hold shift and click. This will select all of them. And option three is to just do control and all. I think uh, controls on Windows, on Mac it's like command all or something. Um, but it should work very similar. So we're going to select all of them and click add. Then we need to create a sequence name. Um, I'm just going to call them darks because that's what they are. And then click convert. We can now look at the darks just to make sure there's nothing wrong with them. As you can see it looks pretty good. Um, how would you know there's something wrong with them? Maybe there's like a large light streak in your image um, or something. I know with some sensors, CMOS sensors, there's Amclo here, for example. Um, don't worry about that. That's what you're going to calibrate out. Um, but if, if you have, for example, a gradient or something running through it, you know that there might be something wrong. Now, for the darks, we don't need to do any additional processing. So we're going to just go right into stacking here. Because um, you have a couple of tabs here. We're just going to go to stacking. We're going to change the method to median stacking, as that's the best one for calibration frame stacking. Uh, and we don't need to change anything else. We can just click 
This is going to run through all of the images and combine them together uh, to create a master file. As you can see, there it is. Now we're done with our darks, we can go over to the next one. If you click the blue one here, the house, you should be back here in the darks uh, directory. But we don't want our biases to be in our darks directory, of course. So we're going to go back one to mono processing tutorial or whatever you've named it. And then click create folder again. This time it's going to be the biases. Create and click open. Now we don't want to convert the darks again and add them to our biases. We want to remove them by clicking this button here to remove all files from the list. So remove and then hit the plus again. And now we're going to go to where we have stored our bias frames. For me it's right here. I'm once again going to do control all or you can do the shift and click method or the drag method and then hit add. I'm going to name them biases and click convert again. These should look fairly similar to your darks but they're different calibration frames. Um, then we're going to go into the stacking again. Again median stacking, same settings as with the darks and just click start stacking. Now, as you can see, we are done stacking the bias frames. We can now go over to the next step. We're going to go and create another directory. So we're going to click home, go back to mono processing tutorial, whatever you've called it, and then create folder. Now, it's finally time to start processing the actual files. So we're going to create one folder. I'm going to call it luminance. If you shot RGB and not LRGB, you can just call the, uh, the R, uh, R folder, it's going to be the same. So, luminance, open, and then we're once again going to convert the files. So, remove all from list, click the plus, and search where you have your luminance files. I have them right here, so I'm going to go control all, and load them up. I said I had 24, apparently I have 22, as you can see in the bottom right, uh, where you can see all of your files. I'm going to call these the lights luminance, and then convert. As you can see, here's our image. Um, if your yours is looking different, like this, it's darker, you can change the viewing mode here to auto stretch, which will show a preview of a single image, basically. Now we need to convert our flat frames because, well, we, we want to process uh, our lights with the flats. So, remove all from list again, plus, and then go back to your flats, wherever you may have them. I have them right here. You should also, by the way, uh, shoot flats for all of your different filters, um, because otherwise it won't be very accurate. If, is there, if there's any dust, for example, on your... Um, on your, on your filters. Um, I have an extra one here, don't worry about it, it's from uh, a different stacking program. I messed around with it uh, on Sunday, as you can see. Um, add, then I'm gonna call it flats luminance, click convert, as you can see, here are my flats. Then we want to pre process our flats. Um, it's basically by creating an offset, uh, by using an offset, which is the bias frame. So, we click uh, use offset here, by checking it, and then go into the folder here, the, on the right of the master bias, click it. Now we're going to go back into our biases, and then here we can see biases stacked. So, we're going to cl double click it, and it's going to open in... Uh, in the in the offset tab basically the rest of the settings aren't very important we can just click start pre-processing with the pre-processing done we can now stack our flats so go into stacking median stacking for now and do start stacking with the flats stacked we can now go and pre-process our lights so we don't we already converted our lights so we can go into sequence search sequences and then there should be flats, pre-processed flats, and the lights. We're going to go for the lights, and then go back into pre-processing, 
uncheck our bias because we have already subtracted the bias from the flats click use dark and use flat now we need to tell Cyril where these files are so click the folder and we're now doing the dark so we're going to go into darks and, the, and then dark stacked then we need to show where the flats are which is going to be this one the pre-processed flats stacked dot fit and there it is we have now gotten the flats and the darks we have also have this optimization um, you can use it you can try it out uh, i haven't found much use for it um, I, I would just suggest leaving it for now on off Equalize CFA, um, I found to have a lot of problems by clicking this one accidentally because it was Oh wait, I need to uh, equalize my flat frames. No you don't. It should be perfectly fine without If you are having problems with um, maybe some colors on the edges um, where your vignetting used to be Then you can try it, but I would suggest leaving it off for now um, I've had problems with this in the past now we are going to use cosmetic correction because it will replace the hot pixels by what it thinks should be there so it's going to improve our final result basically we can click estimate here and this is going to give us the amount of pixels it's going to um, improve or adjust uh, as you can see my cold sigma uh, which is the left one here has zero pixels and the hot pixels has 7473 um, as long as this one's white uh, in white it should be fine if you if you have it too low or too high uh, whatever or I think too low it should be um, then this one's gonna turn red and then you're just adjusting too many pixels so we're gonna go and lower our cold sigma you can test different values um, i know mine is around here around uh, 100 around 200 something like this and as you can see uh, i have 1200 now that's fine you, you can tweak these but it shouldn't matter that much in the end so click start pre-processing and now it's going to process our lights with our stacked flat and our darks as you can see it has pre-processed uh, the lights um, for me it's a little bit bad uh, you can see a circle here circle here there's still some dust modes but for you it should be a lot better um, I'm having some trouble with my camera lately um, it looks like there might be some chalk uh, close to the sensor um, I've been I've been uh, in contact with the with the uh, support from uh, QSI, my, my, the manufacturer basically um, and with our pre-processing done we can now go into registration um, I would always suggest the registration method to be global star alignment this is the most accurate of the, of the bunch but if it fails because it may have too little stars or it's unable to detect the stars itself you can try two or three star alignment which is also uh, fairly accurate um, but it, it is prone to fail uh, it's more prone to fail than global star alignment so start with global star alignment basically um, the rest of it should be fine um, if you're having trouble with global star alignment you can also try using min uh, less star pairs um, but for me the, the standard settings have worked fine also if you are undersampled if you don't know what it means there's enough um, out there but basically what it means is that your stars are too small uh, in your image and you, you may want um, and then you with simplified drizzle it will create four pixels out of one this sounds really good because you're you're doubling your image size but the disadvantage is you're also doubling the noise so if you don't have a lot of data um, I wouldn't suggest it but you can of course try it out uh, there's no reason not to basically for me I already am oversampled so my stars are too big um, with my long focal length telescope so I'm just gonna go hit go register and leave this one off as you can see it is now registered all of our images 
Um, this, is, this is evident uh, with the black border here. Um, you can go into the frames list in the bottom right here. And then you can just blink through all of your images with the arrow keys. Or you can click uh, to different images. And here it's important that you deselect the worst ones. Maybe one where you, your guiding wasn't optimal and your stars are, aren't round enough. Or where a massive plane flew by. Or where maybe some high clouds were so you don't have a lot of contrast. Um, so just unselect those because they'll uh, negatively affect your stack. For me, I'm not going to use this one because of low contrast. This one because of low contrast and a plane flew past it. I'm going to use all of these, they are fine. This one has low contrast, this one has low contrast, and this one has low contrast. I'm going to use the rest of them, they should work fine. Um, then we're going to go into the plot. Um, and this is going to show you which images are better than other ones. The bottom one here is the, is the sharpest and the top one here is uh, the least sharp. I'm going to use all of them, but if you have a lot of data, if you have enough images, I would suggest unchecking the worst ones because it will sharpen up your image. If you want to make sure that Cyril did a good job of selecting the ones that are less sharp, you can click on one with right mouse button and it's going to show and click exclude frame or show frame. First I would suggest show frame and this will show the image to you and then as you can see it has selected this one, frame 12, and then you can uncheck it or um, and deselect it basically. I am going to use this one because it has by far the most contrast and I want that. Um, so, next step, we can go stacking. For stacking, I would suggest using average stacking with rejection. This is the method that almost all stacking programs use. Um, S-Step, uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Um, Pixinsight uses it as well. I don't know about APP though, but I think it, it will also use something comparable. So, average stacking with rejection. Set these to the standard values. I believe it's 5.5. Mine is a bit messed up from testing out uh, combat stacking. Um, I'm also going to use 5.5, just it should work fine. Winsorized Sigma clipping, always. It's um, I think it's the best one, it's the most common used, um, so just use that one. Also, I would suggest using weighted, um, this is going to look at the noise, the ones with less noise, it's going to, um, going to prefer the ones with less noise. Uh, that's that one, and then we can just click start stacking. And there it is our first luminance stack. Now that we are done stacking our luminance, um, you need to do the same thing for the other three files. For the other three image, uh, image or your other three filters. Or two, or however many you shot. Um, I'm not gonna go over, through, over this, because uh, we've done it with the luminance and it's the exact same steps. Um, you, if you still need some help with it, um, you can go back into where I started processing the luminance. Um, I'll try and leave like a little little mark where, where we did the luminance bit. Um, you don't have to do the binds and the darks again because they should be equal for all targets. But you do need to do the flats and the lights for all of them. So pre-processing, registration, selecting the correct files, whatever. I won't go over it now or speed it up a bit, but uh, I won't go over it now um, and I'll see you when I'm done with the red, green and blue stacks. So I've just finished uh, stacking the R, G and B channels. As you can see this is my G, ch G channel, R, G stacked dot fit. So what we're going to do is create another working directory uh, just to keep things organized. So click the home and then click create folder. RGB combination. combination click create click open what's important now is to make sure the images are all aligned 
So, we're going to hit the plus, go into monoprocessing tutorial again, and now go to the different stacks. So, luminance, I'm going to go for the red, I'm going to go for the green, and I'm also going to grab the blue here, just like this. Then, we can cre create a new sequence name, so I'm going to so uh, depending on the the uh, the order of your images, for me it's L R G B, but if you for example open them like B G R L, you can name it here in the sequence name B G R L. But I'm going to call it L R G B because that's the order in which I have my images here. Um, it's important you do this because a serial uh, doesn't really uh, take in account the old names in its in its uh, naming, um, in a way it created in, in in the way it creates sequences. So lRGB stacks. Click convert. Then we can go into the image, uh, the image, the sequence thingy, the frame list, and we can go over the images. And as you can see, it moves with every single stack. We want to make sure this isn't the case, so we're going to go back into registration. Um, I'm going to use global star alignment again, and then click go register. And as you can see, it hasn't filled a single one, and it has registered all four. Now that we have aligned our different stacks, we can combine them in LRGB, or RGB if you don't have luminance. We're finally going to see some colors. We're going to go into image processing. Go into RGB compositing, and then here it is, the little window we're going to work with. We're going to start at the top here, luminance, click the folder, and then your luminance stack. Um, be careful, you need the R dash LRGB stacks, and not the standard version, because the R version, that is the one we registered. So we did the, the luminance, now we're going to do the red. Then the green, and then the blue. And then we can hit close, because we're done with compositing. The first thing I like to do is to make sure that the colors, or the, 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 the combination is saved, so we don't have to do this 10,000 10, times, because we keep uh, messing up. Um, we're going to name it LRGB combination. And click enter. Or save here and then save it in 32 bits because then you're not eager to or you're, you're less uh, likely to clip your data and click save now to have a look at our data or, or actually have a look um, at what it looks like we can go into the bottom here go from linear to auto stretch and then we can have the red channel here the green channel here the blue channel and the RGB. The first thing I like to do is, as you can see, the colors are all messed up. We can go into image processing and then into color calibration, photometric color calibration. Then, this might look a little bit um, overwhelming at first, um, but what you need to do is in the image parameter, first type in the name of your target. For me, it's Messier 106, so M106. Click find. This is going to search the database, and as you can see, it has found uh, this right ascension and declination. Then, the focal distance. This is the focal length of your telescope. For me, it's 1290 millimeters. And then we have the pixel size. The pixel size, you may notice one already. Um, if you don't, it's quite easy to find on uh, Google. So you're going to go into Google Chrome, and just type in the name of your camera. For me, it's QSI 583 WSG, and then pixel size. As you can see, QSI 583, and then the pixel size is 5.4 microns, which is exactly the value I already uh, put in here. Then, um, if you're having some trouble, you might want to downsample the image, but only if you're having trouble, you should touch these settings. It should work fine in the beginning, just like this. 
Also uh, on this image, as you can see it worked perfectly first try. But if it doesn't, one thing you can try doing is close out of this one. Go into the three bars here in the top. Go into image information, image plate solver. Same settings, it looks fairly pretty much the same. But this uses more stars from a different catalog. Uh, and by clicking OK here, it's going to place, it's more likely to place solve correctly. Um, and this will save your the the image um, or the, the right ascension and the declination. It's going to save it in the fits. So if you now close out of this one, or in the file basically, it's going to save them in the file. And if we save it, and we go back into color calibration, photometric color calibration. These values are more precise and thus the photometric color calibration is more likely to succeed. Okay, with that out of the way, the first thing we can do is crop our image. Because as you can see, there's a weird border here from stacking and from um, aligning differently and maybe some meridian flip and I don't know what not. Just stacking artifacts in general. You're going to go into one of the channels, blue, red, red, green or blue, whatever you want. And you're just going to create a border. So I'm going to start here, on the top left. And like this, I'm going to crop it something like this. Just make sure you are not having um, any more stacking artifacts. You're going to want to crop those out. That's, that's the main point of what we're doing here. You need to be in one of the channels because in RGB you're not able to make any adjustment to your selection here. So when you have the selection done you can right click and then hit crop. And as you can see now we are cropped. The next step is to remove this weird gradient from green to red. So or any type of gradient uh, in your image. So, image processing, background extraction. The one I would suggest using, the method, is RBF. Um, polynomial is what they used to use before, but RBF is, uh, 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 is in general just a little bit better. Smoothing, you don't need that yet, you can adjust it later. Start with the samples per line. Uh, 20 is enough, but you can go higher or lower. Um, I wouldn't suggest higher actually, um, because then you are maybe it's more likely you're going to land on a star and you don't need more than 20 on a row, uh, in my opinion, or what I found. Uh, grid tolerance, don't use it too much, we're going to manually adjust the uh, boxes. So, we're going to click generate. And as you can see, it has, it has made uh, a couple of selections with the uh, boxes. We're going to go into one of the channels, red, green, or blue, whichever has the most detail uh, or the most nebula, whichever has the most nebula, so you you know where where that you're out of the nebula, basically. I don't like the fact that they're out, uh, partially out of the image, so I'm going to remove those by clicking right click. And you can place them by clicking left click. If you want to go around the image, you can hit control and scroll uh, to basically move yourself around with your mouse. Or you can drag by clicking control and then the mouse and just start dragging and deselecting. So this is quite a tedious process, it can take quite a bit of time, and you can be as precise as you want. But the most important thing is that you aren't selecting any of your nebulae. For me it's this galaxy, I don't want to select it, I want to go around it. So it's something like this. And you also don't want to be on any stars, like this. So you're going to remove it and just place it right next to it. So you're not on the star or on the nebulae. Um, I'm going to remove these as well, so there's a dust mode, it shouldn't be for you if you've calibrated with flats. Remove that one. Let's see, I'm going to remove these as well. Click here. Let's see, this one. 
and that should be about it. Then we can click compute, compute background, go back into RGB, and as you can see, it's a lot better. If you it show original image, before and after, it's a pretty big difference. If you're not sure if your background is perfectly flat, you can change auto stretch to histogram. And as you can see, this shows a lot more, um, a lot more gradient, uh, smaller, uh, smaller things in the gradient. For example, this one. As you can see, it was on this red star, which we didn't see before, and that resulted in a less than optimal background. Compute background again. If you've made some adjustments. But for me, this is fine. Um, I'm going to click apply. I'm going to change histogram back to other stretch. Just like this. Now, we're basically, we've done most of the steps we need to inside of Cyril. Um, uh, we have gone over all of these. The rest isn't that important. You can mess around with them. Feel free to do so. But I won't go over them in this video because they are more niche um, Niche, uh, they're slightly now that we have done uh, cropping, a photometric color calibration, and a background extraction, we can start stretching our image. Stretching means that we are going to make it um, brighter because it's, right now the image is still very dark. We were looking at it. In auto stretch mode, which is what it would look like if we stretched, but it's still in a linear phase, and we're going to start stretching now. So, image processing, and as you can see, there are three versions of stretching asine transformation, generalized hyperbolic transformation, and histogram transformation. Dependent on your image, and of course, your image uh, and what equipment you use. Um, you can use more or less asine transformation. Asine transformation basically uh, brings out more color in your image. Because if, if you look in asine transformation, I would stretch it a lot. You can see there is a shit ton of color, but it will also be more maybe here blue where it should be clipped. Or it's going to just create a lot of color. I don't want too much because they'll, in my opinion, ruin the image. But I do want a little bit, because who doesn't like a bit of color in their image? So I'm gonna go for like something like 150, 175, something like this. And I'm gonna adjust the black point with the slider here until we can see some contrast appear. You can play around with this, um, but be careful, you don't wanna clip the darks. By clipping I mean it's completely dark. So we're gonna want some kind of gray level um, in the background. Let's see here. To me this looks pretty good. We aren't clipping any of the darks but we still have some separation from the galaxy and the rest. So click apply and then the rest of the adjustment we're gonna do in histogram transformation. I'm going to click the auto stretch here and as you can see it has done way too much stretching there's a lot of noise now so I'm going to reduce it a little bit something like this and I'm also going to bring in the darks a little bit be careful once again we don't want to clip too much which just keeping this under one percent percent something like this looks pretty good in my eyes I'm going to click apply, close, and now we are done with stretching. You can spend a lot more time on this, um, maybe even use the generalized hyperbolic transformation, um, which we didn't do in this, uh, in this video. Um, but for now I just want to continue uh, with the video because it's already getting way too long, I'm afraid. So, save, and... We're gonna save it in two time. Uh, we're gonna save it twice. We're gonna save it for Cyril, so it's in fit format, and we're gonna save it uh, to use in Photoshop. Um, for Cyril, I'm gonna call it Cyril first adjustments. Adjust.
Minus.fit. Hit save. 32 bits. Save. Now the same thing, but for Photoshop we're going to change the last bit after the dot from fit to tiff. There's a different file type which can be read by Photoshop and fit can't be read by Photoshop. So tiff, save, 16 bit, um, that's easier for Photoshop to work with than 32 bit, and then click save. Now we're done in Cyril and I'll open up Photoshop and see you then. As you can see we have now opened the image in Photoshop and we can finally make some adjustments here. But we're not going to make them on the original image because we want to go back to if we ever make a mistake or um, we just want to check what it was like previously. We can just uh, we can do that quite easily with different layers. So you're going to grab it by holding your uh, left mouse button going to the bottom right and click plus to the plus here. Now that we have a new layer, we can go and do some noise reduction because that's the first step I prefer to do. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of noise, but it's mostly around the galaxy, not in the core here itself. It's a little bit, but it's not that much. Um, so I like to create a mask first. We're going to go into select, color range, change the select to shadows. And then adjust it until you're only selecting the background. Click OK. And as you can see it has now made a circle around the nebulae and around the stars. Then we go into the bottom right here to create a mask. And we can check the mask if it's correctly by clicking left alt and then clicking on the mask. And as you can see white it is quite good white is um, what we are adjusting and black is what's leaving um, what it's leaving alone with the mask we can go into filter camera roll filter and then we can scroll down here and there it is details and then you have sharpen noise reduction and color noise reduction i'm going to start with some color noise reduction and zoom in um, by clicking and then dragging to the sides. To the right is to zoom in and to the left is zoom out. To the right, something like this and then just to a certain amount where I'm not seeing as much noise and then some color noise or some normal noise reduction like this. And this looks pretty good. And I'm gonna click OK. And as you can see it has just selected or just adjusted the background and it has left our galaxy mostly alone. And also our stars. Now that we've reduced the background noise a little bit, we can do Ctrl Shift Alt E to create a stamp layer. The stamp layer just combines all of the previous images together in one layer. From the stamp layer, we want to go into Select Color Range, but now we want to make a highlights um, highlights mask. This looks pretty good to me. Click OK. And then click Mask. And then check it by left alt and click. And as you can see it has selected the galaxy. One thing though, it has also selected the stars. But we don't want that. We don't want to uh, sharpen up our stars. Because that will look quite ugly. So I'm going to click, click, grab the brush. And then I'm going to change the color to black. Um, you can switch by clicking X, as you can see white, black, and I'm just going to paint all of this black. Just the galaxy, that's all I want to adjust, uh, all I want to sharpen. So I'm going to paint this in. See. Also, um, this is taking quite long. We can create a different size by creating by using a bigger size. It can be easier or a smaller size for some um, finer adjustments around the galaxy, for example. But for now I'm just gonna go like this. This. 
and just like that. We now have our mask done. We can go into our image again by clicking on it. And we can go back into filter, camera roll filter. What we're now going to do is just sharpen up our uh, core a bit. So we're going to drag sharpen. But be very careful because as you can see you're very very quickly going too much. I'm um, just going to do a little bit. 20, something like this. It's a small adjustment, it doesn't have to be a big one. Um, and then what's way easier, um, which I would always suggest doing, is just the clarity. Clarity slider. You can go overboard with this very quickly, be careful. Um, just in small amounts, also some texture. And then click OK. And as you can see, it has just sharpened up the image a little bit. We can go back and forth by clicking the um, eye here. As you can see, it's just a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of uh, stuff. One thing I'm seeing though is it's a little bit green here. There's some green noise. We don't want that, we're going to remove it. So we're going to go back into filter, camera roll filter. And then scroll down. And there it is. And we're going to go into saturation. And then click this little guy. Um, uh, we can go to a little bit of green. We can just remove some of its saturation. Don't do too much. A little bit. Just improves the image a little bit. Just like that. And then you can create another stamp. Ctrl Shift Alt E. And there it is. Um, and a little image. Find a little bit of adjustment. What I would suggest doing. Is to adjust your background level. Um, uh, so what you're aiming for is uh, here we have the uh, I don't know what it's called but in info um, I have if you go to the background with your mouse we can see it is 41, 42 and 39 uh, for the different black values it should be around 15, 20 something like this so what I like to do is go into filter camera roll filter and then just lower your shadows maybe even the dark blacks a little bit I'm going to OK again and then that's still a little bit high 28 and so I can do it again OK, and as you can see we are within the range of 15 and 20. Um, by doing this you're also creating some more contrast and some separation between your nebulae and your background so I would always suggest doing this. Um, but be careful if you're going too much, like this is becoming like 0 or 1, then you're clipping your data and you should never be clipping. Um, it, it just doesn't look good. Um, you're literally throwing away data. So, with those final adjustments done, we can now save our file and export it. So, we're going to start with saving it. So, file, save as, I'm going to call it Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop final adjustments, for example, it doesn't really matter what name you give it, just as long as it makes sense to you. And click save. Leave all of these settings as it is, it should be fine. And there it is. Then, again, go to File, Export, Export As. Now you can change to JPEG or to PNG, whatever you want. I would suggest PNG as it shows more details compared to JPEG. And then click Export. Now you're going to go back to your folder, for me it's right here, I'm just going to call it final m106.png, save. With our PNG saved, you can now go ahead and share it on social media, share your image on Instagram, on Facebook, Twitter, whatever you like. 
Um, but that was it for this video. I hope you found it useful. And I wish you all clear skies.